afternoon. My name is Rich Longo, and I'll be your host. Thank you for joining us for another Flycast Partners webinar. Today's webinar is BOMGAR, Best Practices and Remote Support, presented by Mike Sell. Mike Sell is the Director of Strategic Alliances at BOMGAR. He has over 20 years of experience in the IT service management industry as a customer, consultant, and solutions engineer. He directs the activities of BUMGAR's U.S. system integration partners and the partnerships with IT service management platform vendors by seeking ways to optimize and integrate remote support within the IT operational environment. Let me tell you more about Flycast Partners. We provide IT service management consulting to organizations all across North America. Our clients remain ahead of the curve on technology adoption while maintaining the rock-solid principles of ITIL and practical-focused projects. Our website is always monitored by our team of well-trained ITSM specialists. And please visit us online at www.flycastpartners.com or feel free to call us at 1-844-FLYCAST. This is just one of our weekly webinars, and we encourage you to utilize our website for researching industry white papers, training that is available from ITIL to ITSM tools, assistance with professional services, and a new ITSM solution finder. Without further ado, I present Mike Sell and our webinar today, BOMGAR, Best Practices and Remote Support. It's all yours, Mike. Thanks very much, Rich. I appreciate the introduction, and I guess good afternoon, good morning, wherever you might find yourself. I'm actually on the West Coast today in a hotel room, and uh, hopefully, Rich, can you hear me still okay? I hear you fine, Mike. You sound loud. Uh, just using the, uh, the, the speaker and microphone on my computer today. So our agenda today, we want to talk uh, about best practices for remote support, but first to set the stage about why all the fuss as Rich had mentioned, I've got a rich history, having been a customer, consultant, sales, and now directing activities. It, it's a very exciting topic. I think it's one that's often overlooked. So I did want to spend a few minutes talking about uh, the benefits and why all the fuss about best practices. We'll get into those, and then if there's time, we'll uh, have some questions towards the end. One of the things that we're uh, always looking to do, all of us in IT, is uh, delight customers. But I think it's kind of fun to start off with kind of a snippet. You know, why, why can't we just satisfy them? People are looking more and more for delighted customers, and I think it has a lot to do with consumerization of IT these days. Just real quick, we're not going to be spending a whole lot of time on BombGuard, but just for those of you who are not familiar with us, uh, we've been in business for over 10 years. We have 8,500 customers all around the world using our technology for secure remote support. We're a, a really a next-generation remote support technology. It's agentless. We don't have to have... Uh, a pre-deployed agent and enable the technician on any type of platform, Windows, Linux, um, Macintosh, even an iPad, to remotely and securely go back and gain control of any type of device, similar platforms uh, and, and, and others back on the corporate network. We have a very passionate following of customers and that promoter score is very, very high. Uh, in other words, our customers love the technology and we get constant feedback at their various shows about how Bumgar has helped them. So let's talk a little bit about what all the fuss is about. You guys are certainly familiar with this. We're all trying to do more with less. Uh, there's more devices coming onto the network. It's not just PCs and laptops. We have to deal now with smartphones and uh, you know, tablets, servers. A number of our customers are using BombGuard to remotely control and gain access to kiosks. So there's all these devices that are out there, and they still require support. Mobility has been here for a long, long time. Um, but still, it set the expectation that we need to be able to provide support anytime, anywhere. Just like myself today, I'm traveling, and uh, I do need support, so it's nice to have technologies that enable support of mobile devices as well. Security is something that everyone's concerned about. There, there's Every day, it seems uh, somebody is getting breached, um, and, and that's certainly a key aspect about remote support. We'll talk more about this later, but it is um, it is the number one way the bad guys get in, and we need to need to be certainly sensitive to that. But something that's also often overlooked is compliance with respect to remote support. If you are in healthcare, of course HIPAA is something that 
is in the back of your mind every day. And from a remote support perspective, if a technician takes control of a doctor's PC, you need to be aware of what it is they did. So if someone questions or challenges you, what did that technician do while on the doctor's PC, having the ability to not just have a secure connection, but also prove what happened during that session. That's true in every industry that's out there. If it's uh, retail, of course, the technician could be controlling the cash register or PCI compliance comes into play. Did that person see credit card data as an example? But again, with the consumerization, uh, you know, the announcements coming from Apple yesterday, a lot of buzz on, on the market as far as their release of products. Uh, people are expecting more and more and, and certainly driving higher levels of satisfaction from within the IT department. From personal experience, I know uh, help desk, is, it's, uh, it's difficult. It, um, it gets harder and harder every year as more devices are out there, more operating systems. The expectations of IT uh, continues to grow. So the challenges of, of doing nothing but, uh, have done nothing but going up and up. Um, desk, side, desk side visits, in addition to calls, um, I used to call it the, oh, by the way, ticket. So you're walking down the hall and someone taps you on the shoulder, oh, by the way, Mike, can you help me out with this? So that, that continues to be a problem today. With respect to verbal communications, I used to live in the Northeast, I'm now in the Southeast. Just differences in accents, sometimes the ability to accurately record what's happening on an incident, and especially as there's been uh, a, a big push for outsourcing of call centers, there's challenges that, that happen internationally as well. Many, many tools are out there. Oftentimes we find not just from an incident management tracking system, but even within the same desk that we use multiple tools for remote support. And that, of course, requires an additional set of care, additional sets of training. So again, we see this uh, over and over again. Long incident resolution times, uh, multiple calls, callbacks, multiple visits. Again, this is a tough, tough job. And I certainly have empathy for those who are doing this day in and day out. So the fuss, there's huge cost and productivity gains that come from leveraging remote support and doing it in the right way. I mean, just as an example, and again, we'll talk more about this later, integrating remote support, if done effectively, we've, our customers tell us that that will save anywhere from one to three minutes per incident simply by integrating with the, the remote support tool with the incident management uh, ticketing system. But it, it by itself, our customers, and these are data points from back from our customers, decreasing call resolution times anywhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 75 percent, simply by allowing the technician to go and just quickly take control of the device, get the business user back to work. Reducing on-site on -site visits rather than dispatching, that's very, very costly. Uh, reducing those on-site visits can translate to huge, huge financial savings. And of course, when it's all said and done, what we're trying to do is reduce incident resolution times. And then again, we, we find our customers will tell us that just leveraging Bombard's, Bongar's technology will do that by 33%. But this is true of a lot of remote support technologies, and that's really what this is about. Faster time to resolution, increased technician efficiency, which by the way, is something that I feel two organizations overlook is, what's the effect on their technicians? As we'll see here in a moment, Technician satisfaction also drives customer satisfaction and being making sure that the, the technician has the best tools to do their job is, is vitally important. But again, we realize this is a webinar. I'm a representative of Baumgar, so I didn't want to just have it be me talking. Obviously, that's uh, the nature of a webinar, but it's nice to see quotes back from our customers. So don't take it from us. Take it from our customers. We have many different examples. Our customers are just talking about the value of remote support, and here's a few on this particular screen. One other interesting aspect of remote support in a general sense, um, this is a slide, by the way, one of our, our partners is a company called MetricNet. They are independent. They don't care if you're using, um, you know, BMC, Remedy, or ShareWell, or ServiceNow for ticketing system. They don't care if you're using 
uh, PC Anywhere or BombGuard for remote support. They have they do benchmarking, benchmarking of service desks, of desktop support, and external call centers. They have thousands and thousands of, of um, studies that they've done just to benchmark performance. And what they've done is they've plotted out a scattergram and showing the effect of first level resolution where organizations that are um, using remote diagnostic or remote control software versus not having. So seeing a roughly 16% uh, increase just by leveraging remote support software can have a true impact on first level resolution. Another aspect, something I thought was very interesting, most organizations tend to look at spending money on external support, business technology priorities, the internal customer service actually is ranked higher in 2013, and it was also higher in 2012. I'm very anxious to see the data coming out from Information Week. But again, something for the, most of the folks on this phone or on this webinar are dealing with internal service. And the businesses are saying, we want better internal service. And a real quick and easy way to do that is leveraging remote support. And this is just data, by the way, from folks like yourselves who are on this call. So I just wanted you to see where the source of the information. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about best practices. Some of the stuff, again, is obvious, and it's, it's unfortunately overlooked. We would strongly recommend that you take a look at both process and product training. A lot of organizations will purchase a remote support technology, and it's a thingy. It's a thingy that they use on their service desk or a thingy they use in desktop support, and they really don't take the time to pause and reflect on how it could be better optimized within both a process perspective, but also looking at it from a product training perspective. It's true of many technologies. Many organizations only leverage about 20% of the functionality, and oftentimes that's just simply as a result of not being aware of functionality that's available. But from a process perspective, one of the things that we've learned, uh, both ourselves as well as you know, feedback we get from our customers, is is conditioning the, the desk to leverage, whenever possible, leverage your remote support earlier in the process. So rather than spending two, three, four minutes asking the customer to tell me about your problem and recording notes, ask for permission to see what they're seeing and, and e either take over control or using some sort of a shadowing technology, be able to see the actual errors that the end user is seeing. So that will save, um, we've heard anywhere up to 15% uh, just on, on the overall ticket time because you're reducing that uh, call setup time. Leverage also, another point about that from a process perspective is leveraging the technologies appropriately. If your remote support tool is recording everything, including uh, say a video recording of the session, leverage what you've learned or what you've seen during that, that call setup or incident setup time to feed into a defect analysis or problem management process. We'll talk more about that later, but again, it can save time for when you take an incident and push it into problem management because it's causing multiple types of problems. Leverage what you've learned, it's recorded, and it helps speed up the, the problem management process as well. But again, it's a lot of it has to do with leveraging the, the features that are there. And just as an example, we know of even our own customers that um, leverage some of the functionality because they may not be aware that it's there. Third-party vendor access. You can allow vendors to securely come onto your network and isolate them to be able to, to work on maybe two or three systems and not give them VPN access. Give them the ability to remotely come onto the network, authenticate against your remote support technology, and then know everything that they've done while they're on, on your network. Collaboration, very, very powerful, especially as it relates to first contact resolution rates by able to bring in a technician very quickly into session and, and resolve that, that business issue as quickly as can by having multiple people focused in on that particular problem. So what's the effect of, of customer satisfaction if you do this? If you think about training your technical support staff, they're going to be more satisfied, they're going to be happier with their, their, the technologies that they have. It's going to make them more productive. It's going to make them feel good. There is a direct correlation between happy technicians and happy customers. So there's a, there's a soft benefit and a soft reason for making sure that you pause and take the time to leverage technologies that are so vital to 
IT operations and IT service desk as well as external support. We do advocate using um, an agentless solution for a variety of reasons. The first generation technologies are the least secure. Uh, they take a lot of time and effort to deploy. Agentless solutions, on the other hand, are very secure, different architectures. Uh, typically, it's a matter of either setting up an account or um, implementing the, the appliance, and it's there, and you start using it immediately. Absolutely ins insist upon integrating with your authentication mechanism, whether it's LDAP, Active Directory. We see Radius quite a bit in retail, and if you're using Kerberos for single sign-on. The reason for doing that, of course, is the first thing that people do when someone leaves the organization is you take them off the network. And if you've integrated with your authentication uh, system, they no longer have access to remote support. Second generation technologies also work off network. First generation technologies don't. If your VPN is down, the agent can't communicate back to the uh, uh, network uh, support technician. So like I'm traveling today and I'm sure you have lots of traveling people in your organization, being able to provide them support while on the road is, is absolutely paramount because VPNs do go down. It happens all the time. So what's the effect on security? Now, usually when I, I have this slide, I get to see people's face on the webinar. Um, I, I, I imagine there's a few batted eyebrows and you're kind of wondering what is this about? It's perception versus reality. The perception that people have they're, they're afraid to swim in the ocean because they're afraid they're going to get eaten by a shark. But in reality, it's more likely that you're going to uh, be killed while driving a car. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. Deer are everywhere. So the more likely that you're going to have an accident and, and be killed driving and hitting a deer is, is much, much more likely than swimming in the ocean and getting eaten by a shark. So what's it have to do with IT? Well, just like there are sharks in the ocean, um, there are other ways that people get in, email is a, is a way that people get in, if people are constantly packing at firewalls, but the number one way that the bad guys get in is remote access to tools. This has been going on for years and years and years. Here's a couple of examples. Um, Subway, Five Guys, Hamburgers, Firehouse Subs, there's lots and lots of examples. Just in the news, uh, obviously much bigger, um, much bigger breaches have happened as well, but it happens all the time, and this has been going on for years. So please ensure that you select a solution that is secure, because that is the way that the bad guys get in. What they do when they get in, that's what you hear about on the news, but the technology vector of the way they get in, the most common way is remote access tools. So make sure it's secure, has full audit logs. Uh, make sure they have a third-party validation of the solution. In other words, do they have somebody that's trying to do a product penetration test and, and giving that extra level of security of knowing the, the solution is secure. Mentioned before the importance to make sure there's support for LDAP and RADIUS, et cetera. And finally, make sure that there's no, um, there's, there's no requirement for special VPN or firewall configurations. You want to make this easy. You want to make it fast. If you've got a traveling sales rep that's, uh, you know, maybe in the carpet manufacturing, business, we have a large customer that does that. The, tech, the, the salespeople simply need to be back to work. They're not specialists, as you guys know. Uh, they don't know their PCs that well, so getting them back to work, that's our objective. So making sure it's very fast and very, very easy. Make sure that there is a way to complement your employee self-service or customer self-service portal. There are different ways to do that. You can simply have buttons on the screen to start a chat session. It does provide just another channel, another communication. A lot of the, the, um, the more recent graduates, they don't want to pick up the phone. They don't want to send emails. We all know that. So just providing them with another way, another communication channel to engage support is absolutely key. And then being able to quickly, without having to leave the tool, without having to go out of context, stay within that chat and do a full remote support session is something that we absolutely advocate. Another option that we see out there is um, deploying an easy button. You can have a pre-configured, but not running, that's where the agent-based technologies get into trouble, but have a pre-deployed agent that's out there or a program that's out there that can be configured, for example, if it's an executive, it goes to the executive support team so that when they are asking for help, it goes to a smaller queue of people versus the general uh, queue and supports, just as an example. But having that out there for the different types of environments that you're supporting. 
And again, ensure that that chat is integrated within the portal. It does save time in that you don't have, you can take the chat logs and pull that into the incident as well so you don't have to rekey that type of information. The benefit for doing that, um, you know, back when I was on a service desk, you, know, you were limited to one-to-one -one communication with the phone. Of course, with chat nowadays, you can do uh, two, three. I, I've heard of agents that are doing four and five different uh, incidents at the same time. Personally, I don't think I can handle more than two or three, but with uh, chat, you're not limited to just the one-to-one -one communication. So we also provide with, again, the more modern technologies, easier to use monitoring approaches. So if you are a supervisor or a manager and you just want to be able to watch, you can do that remotely as well. So make sure that you have that kind of capability built into the overall solution. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to drive towards is, is, is just a faster, better, more efficient end user experience. If you're leveraging chat, you don't have the, the language barriers that I described earlier. And also make sure that you have CAN, um, CAN scripts, CAN set of instructions to make the experience too for the technician easier and faster. A common greeting or a common set of questions, or if you're trying to deal with the setup of the remote support session. Just have those scripts there, canned and ready to go to make it easier for the technician as well as the end user. Best practice number four, I've been alluding to this all along, this is something that I'm very passionate about, is ensuring that remote support is integrated with whatever ITSM platform that you have. It will increase the efficiency of the overall support experience you can launch remote support directly from the incident form itself, um, maybe send a, a URL, assuming the person's email is working, just send that URL out via email so they click on it, you can quickly take over control because now you have the incident number as well as the session ID, that's the hook for the integration and that allows for all of the recording of, of the support session being able to be piped back directly into the incident just to save on call wrap up time. That's a huge, huge benefit right there. But again, um, talked about having self-service portals, but having that chat there be as, as an option. And saving, as I mentioned before, saving the, the or saving on closing of the incident time, record both the chat log as well as the support session. It's, it's clearly going to increase accuracy of information. People don't like to go and update the tickets. I know that, been there, done that but allowing that quick and easy automated approach to recording, here's what we did to fix this issue. Again, what we find is it saves, depends on the environment, somewhere between one to three minutes. If you're a small shop, that probably isn't that attractive to you, but if you are dealing with you know, hundreds and thousands of, of incidents, saving one to three minutes, that's, uh, that's real money. Keep in mind that remote support is not just about incident management. It can be leveraged for change management and problem management. I alluded to problem management before. Again, we're dealing with, uh, if there's changes to software, within, even within the software development life cycle, being able to have the developer see what happened firsthand without, without having to record that in the lab or recreate it in the lab can be a huge time saver in the problem management example. In change management, think about the scenario where you're rolling out a large application. Um, maybe it's a rollout of SAP and there's a there's a server that needs a patch installed. So you can use chain you can use uh, remote support to launch and go out and take control of the server, put the patch on, and and close it out. And what that will do is roll up to the change task, close it, and then roll up to the parent change. So it's more than just just incident management. And this is an example of what it can look like. Uh, this is an example of integration with uh, with ShareWell, but there are integrations out there, of course, with all variety of platforms, whether it's ServiceNow or uh, Footprints to Remedy. But starting a chat session, you can also be inside of a case and be able to launch the case and then the actual details of the session. If there are multiple sessions, those will, will come into play as well, and you see those details within the incident. Best practice number five is collaboration. Ensure that the collaboration capabilities, in this scenario, SAP, you have an end user, has an SAP question, reaches out to level one, the Center of Excellence Application Support Center. Person might be on a MacBook, the 
support center is on Wintel. Let's say we need to get level three involved and heaven forbid they left the office and went out for lunch and maybe they're at Starbucks on a public Wi-Fi session. That's okay. Make sure that they can use their iPad to come into session securely. And if needed, we can also go out to the vendor who's never even heard of, of your support technology before on a different platform such as Linux. The whole, the whole key here is we're driving at first contact resolution rates, which we all know is the number one driver for increased customer satisfaction. So if you're doing that, of course, you're going to be driving down repair times. Those two together will dramatically affect customer satisfaction. The other benefit of leveraging collaboration is level one gets to watch what level three has done. So it's, it's, it's real time on the job training. And again, don't need studies to, to uh, point this out, but it's nice to have empirical data. If, you, if you're able to increase first contact resolution rate, of course, customer satisfaction is going to go up. Number six and best practices, mobility. And that's just with the increased number of mobile devices that are out there, just ensure that you're having a, a common platform for remote support that does support mobile devices. But also think about taking the desk out of the service desk. Allow your technicians to get away and get off the phones. But in an emergency, if they are the subject matter expert and all they have with them is, uh, is a tablet, make sure that they can leverage these technologies now and securely get on with full auditing into the support process and the whole incident management resolution process and, and leverage mobility, embrace it. Best practice number seven, consolidate and centralize. Think about the training issues associated with having multiple tools. We see people or organizations having a Windows-based tool, a Mac tool, um, and, and then different tools for off-network access. So there are challenges both from a training perspective as well as a security perspective. So implementing a unified platform that does it all uh, can save both in terms of anxieties for security folks and the training issues and configuration, but also just makes it easier for your technicians. It's going to de decrease the deployment time and just make things a lot, lot better. Uh, a quote from one of our customers is um, when they implement a remote support, um, they are they recognize that they are the forward base of IT and it provided a coolness factor. So if you're looking for just something that's quick and easy to do to really change the perception and the value of IT, remote support is the way to do it. The number that, that without a doubt, the two organizations that affect the perception that the business has on the value and the customer satisfaction of IT, those two organizations from this chart that you see is the service desk and desktop support. So my contention is that we should absolutely be providing those, particularly those two groups, with the tools to do their jobs better, faster. And supported by HDI research, again, this is just publicly available information. The top five must-have technologies, I think it's interesting. Everybody always has an incident management system. So why not make sure that with the remote support tool, which is equally parallel, is important. Why not make sure remote support and incident management are, in it, are integrated? Customer satisfaction and mean time to repair, again, empirical data. This is, this is almost um, obvious information. You don't need a study to know that if you are able to do things faster, your customer satisfaction is going to go up. So finally, incorporating remote support into standard operating, standard operating procedures. It's really important to go through and think about the different calls where remote support can be used. Of course, it can't be used all of the time, but taking the time to document which ones they are and also identify which ones earlier in the process, uh, you, you can start to use remote support more, more effectively, again, earlier because that will save in overall repair times. Leveraging collaboration to, um, you know, versus just, you know, traditional phone and asking questions will absolutely save on, on first contact resolution and repair times. Leveraging the fact that we do have uh, video recordings and, and the more modern technologies for remote support that can help not just the incident management life cycle, but also problem and change. Finally, um, incorporating of surveys. One of the things that we do advocate is not just customer satisfaction surveys, but also technician surveys. That's how you can learn about things that you can do better within the organization. So we would encourage the use of, of those types of surveys. 
I know we're running short on time. I think we're right at the half hour. But this is just another example. We had a customer that was 100% phone based that swept, that flipped around their model of providing support, and they do now provide 95% via the web, starting with a chat session, and it has had a dramatic effect on the the overall satisfaction. They've been able to do uh, twice as much in, in terms of productivity as they could before doing phone-based support. So a lot more information available up on our website. We'll certainly you know, love to answer any additional questions about, about that. Um, but I think since we're out of time, I'll have to leave up with Rich's information. But please feel free to reach out to, uh, to Rich or myself, and we can answer any questions that you might have. So, Rich, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Yep. All right. Thank you very much uh, for a great presentation, Mike. I really appreciate that. Uh, Brian from Denali, he did ask if a slide deck would be available. Brian will actually go ahead and, and do one up for you. We'll send out a recorded copy of this webinar to you. Uh, so thank you for asking. I just want to remind everyone that our website is monitored by our team of well-trained ITSM specialists. So go ahead and visit us online at www.flycastpartners.com. Feel free to call us at 844-FLYCAST. Uh, we'll be happy to chat with you, answer any questions that we can for you, or if we can't answer your questions on the chat, we'll get you to the right folks and encourage you to utilize our website for researching industry white papers, training that's available from ITIL to ITSM tools, obviously remote uh, and a remote appliance, BOMGAR, assistance with professional services, and a new ITSM solution finder. I want to thank you once again, Mike, for your presentation today. And uh, with that, I'm going to wish everybody a great afternoon and enjoy the rest of your day.